Okay, let's take a look at monosaccharides and how they form cyclic structures. The chemistry involved here is the formation of a hemiacetal. You take an aldehyde and an alcohol, and they react to form a hemiacetal. If you look at a hemiacetal, there's a carbon with an OH, an alcohol style, oxygen and an OR meaning an O with an alkyl group on it so it's got that carbon is part of an alcohol and an ether simultaneously that's what we call a hemiacetal so the way this works uh, you have an aldehyde or ketone aldehydes are more reactive than ketones but it can happen with ketones as well uh, in an acidic environment, you protonate the carbonyl, and that makes this a better electrophile. And this is our nucleophile. And so our nucleophile attacks, these electrons go up onto the oxygen. Our um, alcohol that is now bonded to the carbonyl carbon and um, the next step would be simply deprotonation so i'll just show hydrogen coming off as h plus but it could be a solvent like one of the alcohol molecules takes it um, but so um, in the beginning there uh, i showed the aldehyde protonated uh, I didn't show that happening, but initially that carbonyl grabs an H+, plus, and then we lose H+, plus in the end. So H+, plus is a catalyst, an acid catalyst, helps this reaction take place. Um, without an acid catalyst, this is a much slower reaction. So for carbohydrates, such as D-glucose, uh, we can have a similar uh, a similar reaction where um, the one of the alcohols of glucose at the bottom of the chain can attack the aldehyde carbon and um, that leads to a hemiacetal and so you see in this cyclic structure this is the hemiacetal carbon and this oxygen here was the alcohol oxygen that is on carbon five but now it's part of the ring it's an ether type oxygen or from the perspective of carbon one it's part of the hemiacetal um, so there's our cyclic structure um, we can have furanose forms those are five membered rings and Pyranose forms like you see here. Those are six membered rings. Those are the most common uh, rings that you can form So furanose is a five membered ring monosaccharide and pyranose is a six membered ring and these are named after the compounds pyran and furan and you might see uh, a carbohydrate a monosaccharide uh, with this nomenclature added on so glucopyranose that means it's glucose in the cyclic form a six membered ring cyclic form fructofuranose is fructose in a furanose cyclic structure five membered ring So 
by convention, the hemiacetal oxygen is placed in the rear of the diagram. Here it's in the back of the ring to the right. Um, the hemiacetal carbon, the hemiacetal carbon, also called the anomeric carbon, is to the right. And um, remember, the hemiacetal carbon, the anomeric carbon, was formerly the carbonyl carbon in the straight chain form. And I want to point out something here. Look at the Fischer structure for glucose. How many chiral centers, asymmetric centers, do we have? Four. Well, they're still here. Carbon two is um, a chiral center still. Carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. And all of those are still the same absolute configuration. If they were R, they're still R. If they were S, they're still S. Carbon one, though, is now a chiral center. In the straight chain form, it's not a chiral center because it's sp2, it's trigonal planar. It has to be tetrahedral with four different groups to be a chiral center. So we actually gain a chiral center in the ring form. I will point out that while carbons 2, 3, 4, and 5 are defined by the specific monosaccharide, glucose in this case, carbon 1 is not defined by the sugar, the specific monosaccharide. It forms when the ring forms. It's not part of the monosaccharide. For glucose, pyranose forms are predominant and uh, very little furanose form. Some, some furanose form, but it's very, very small amount. Um, these forms exist in equilibrium. And so you can see in water that the acyclic form is in very small quantity. The cyclic forms are predominant, and I say forms plural because you can see here that at the anomeric carbon, where the hemiacetal is, that OH can be up or down. When the ring forms, it can form either way with the OH up or down. That is a new chiral center and both possibilities exist. That chiral center is not defined by the specific monosaccharide. It's defined by how did that ring form. And there's an actual equilibrium for glucose, D-glucose, the beta form is in greater quantity in equilibrium than the alpha form. So that means it must be a lower energy form, probably less steric hindrance if you take a closer look at the model. So you heard me uh, describe the, the new tetrahedral carbon, um, the new chiral center, as the anomeric carbon. It's the hemiacetal carbon formed when the ring is made. Uh, that uh, is called the anomeric carbon, and the two forms that we call alpha and beta are um, only different from one another by how the OH is oriented. Is it up or down? So these are called anomers. They are not technically isomers because glucose is this it's the same compound it's an equilibrium some is an alpha form with the oh down some is in beta form with the oh up it's the same compound with different ring forms
I wouldn't say conformations because conformations are one molecule changing shape without breaking any bonds. To go between alpha and beta, you do break and form bonds in this equilibrium, but it's different ring forms, different isomers, if you were to lock them in place uh, from one another, that they only differ at that position of the anomeric carbon. The other four chiral centers in the ring form are defined specifically by the monosaccharide. So these are called anomers, and that's the anomeric carbon. So the alpha and beta forms, the simplest definition is for D monosaccharides, alpha, the OH is down, and beta, the OH is up. Remember, in nature, most monosaccharides are D monosaccharides. The L forms, the L stereoisomers are um, not as common in nature. But if you do have an L monosaccharide, then the definition is just the opposite. Alpha would be up and beta would be down. A more exact definition, if you will, um, doesn't distinguish between L and D, separate definitions, if you will. Um, what you do is you look at the carbon to the left of the ring oxygen. And the carbon chain that is attached in the Fischer projection, that's at the bottom of the, uh, the Fischer projection. That remaining carbon chain that is not part of the ring can be up or down. And if the OH on the anomeric carbon is trans, then that is alpha form. Now, here's the thing. When you draw a ring-like structure like this, if it's a D monosaccharide, D, this will be up. These now are trans, and that makes it alpha. This is up because it's D. It's a D monosaccharide, so it's up and is cis to the OH at the anomeric carbon. So that makes it um, beta. This uh, definition is. Um, it's more exact in some ways. I can think of one case where it breaks down if you form the ring and you do so by the oxygen on the lowest carbon of the chain, in this case carbon six, reacting to form the hemiacetal, then you would have uh, a bigger ring than we have here and you would have no carbon chain uh, up or down. It would just be, um, it would be two H's there on, on that carbon to the left of the oxygen. And then this definition wouldn't work. So I guess you would, you would go back to this. For D monosaccharides, alpha is down, beta is up. L monosaccharides, it's the opposite. So here are some other examples. Usually, um, the aldohexoses, like glucose, galactose, mannose, they are six carbon chains with an aldehyde at carbon one. They tend to form pyranose structures. So here you see um, glucose and galactose, and they both form six-membered rings 
There's uh, the sixth carbon is not part of the ring. It's up because these are D carbohydrates. Um, and you can see it's at this carbon here, carbon four, where glucose and galactose differ at carbons uh, two and three. They have the same um, stereochemistry. They have opposite stereochemistry at uh, carbon four. So what does that make them? It makes them diastereomers. They're not mere images. If they're mere images, then um, one would be a D and one would be an L. There would be everything would be flipped. These are stereoisomers that are not mere images, so they're diastereomers. And remember, at carbon one, that's the anomeric carbon, and the OH there is the aldehyde carbon in the straight chain form. So the OHs in this figure happen to be up, which makes them beta forms. They could be up or down. Uh, fructose is a hexose, but it's a keto hexose. And uh, what you have for, for fructose is this is actually carbon one. This is the anomeric carbon. So you have CH2OH. That's carbon two, that's carbon one, and so on. So it's a ketone. So there is a carbon above it in the Fischer projection. Um, when this cyclizes, uh, it tends to form a five-membered ring. And so carbon six, just like glucose, is not part of the ring. It's the oxygen from carbon five that attacks the carbonyl to form the ring. Uh, what's different though is for fructose, um, you form a five-membered ring because the carbonyl is on carbon two and it's a ketone. In glucose, the carbonyl is carbon one, it's an aldehyde, and you get a six-membered ring. So uh, the definitions are still the same. This is D sugar. We know that because the bottom of the carbon chain that's not part of the ring is up. The um, form in this uh, for glucose is alpha, but for fructose it is beta. And that's because when the ring closed the OH could be up or down. So at the anomeric carbon for fructose, because it's beta, the OH is up. Uh, but instead of a hydrogen being down, it's carbon one of the chain being down. That's the difference. And here you can see uh, sucrose, which is a disaccharide. And um, it has D glucose. And this is carbon one here. And this is D fructose. And they are uh, joined together. And it is a one five linkage because this is carbon five. So it's a, we call that a glycoside bond between the sugars, between the monosaccharides to form a di saccharide. But you can see um, if this oxygen here were an OH, it's down. So this would be an alpha form. And uh, here in our um, fructose, this should be an oxygen here. It's missing. 
it's up. So it's the beta form of the fructose. Now for the fructose molecule, I'm sorry, for the glucose molecule in this disaccharide, it is locked in to the alpha form because it's not an OH that's down, but the oxygen is bonded to the other carbon of the other monosaccharide. So that equilibrium uh, cannot occur. It's locked into this alpha position. But the defructose, um, it's not bonded to anything at the an through the anomeric oxygen. And uh, so that can actually go back and forth between alpha and beta in the equilibrium. So the last thing to look at is Haworth projections. And these are like Fisher projections. It's a way to visualize carbohydrates quickly and easily and take into account their um, stereochemistries at each uh, chiral center. So um, we start by drawing a ring and we can have a pyranose form or a furanose form. So these are the conventions for the furanose. It's a five-membered ring and the oxygen that's part of the ring is in the back. And the same for the six-membered pyranose ring. It's to the back and back right of the ring, if you will. Um, the anomeric carbon um, is to the right. So these are both numbered with the anomeric carbon being one. So we're assuming it's an L-dose, but um, I guess that's the numbering around the ring, but be careful if you have a ketose, the anomeric carbon is still to the right, but it may not be number one in the monosaccharide like we just saw with fructose. So what do you do next? You add the carbon chain that's not part of the ring. So, um, Remember, and we're going to use the glucose as our example. This will be carbon one, and that's the anomeric carbon right there. Okay, that's the anomeric carbon. And as you go down, uh, we see it's the oxygen on carbon five. This is carbon five. This is the oxygen in the ring is bonded to carbon five. Well, there's another carbon in the chain, carbon six. And uh, where do we put that? We put that up, CH2OH. Why do we put it up? Because it's a D sugar. So we put it up. Now, um, The next part is to add the anomeric OH. So remember, if it's alpha at carbon one, this is five, six, this is carbon one. If it's alpha, the OH will be down And if it's beta, the OH will be up. And, you know, sometimes people are not trying to define it. They're, they're saying, you know, this is the ring form. We don't really care. So you might see something like this, like a squiggly line. That means it's just not defined alpha or beta. Um, the remaining OHs, let's take... Uh, our glucose here. This is carbon five, that's six. This is carbon one. Let's let's take this um, the beta form because this is up, right? That's beta. So we'll follow what this picture is uh, giving us. Um, so we'll use beta, OH, and H. This is up because it's D. This is up because it's beta. And um, we still have OHs um, 
to do. So uh, the rule is any OH is to the right points down. So let's look at carbon two. This is carbon two, right? Well, if you look at carbon two, this is to the right. And so this should be down. And for carbon three, it's to the left. So it should be up. This is carbon four. That's to the right. So we put that down. Okay. So that is the Haworth projection for beta D glucose. So here are some different representations of beta D-glucose, um, you can show the chair, you know, actually draw it like a chair. And um, glucose is the one um, that if you look at the chair, um, everything is equatorial in the, in the chair form. And uh, of course, in the beta form, that OH is equatorial as well. It could be down, that'd be alpha form. Then uh, here's looking, so left, you're looking down on the molecule using wedges and dashes. The Fisher projection, some people will do this with the Fisher projection. They show the ring. Um, this is like a ring in a Fisher projection. So they're showing that the oxygen of carbon five is now bonded to carbon one. Uh, And I guess they're being careful. It's kind of silly, but they're showing the OH on carbon one off to the right, which is down, which is alpha for this one. And the Haworth projection is like we just saw. So some of these are beta form, some are alpha. Be careful of that. So um, let's try alpha. D manos. We want it in Pyranos form. Okay. So um, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six, and one. Two, three, four, five, and um, it's this oxygen here that attacks carbon one. And um, what's the first thing? Well, it's a D carbohydrate, so carbon six. I'm going to put that up. It's alpha. So this oxygen, which becomes OH. Be alpha. So on carbon one, that's going to be down. And then uh, what is the rule for carbon two? If it's to the left, it is up. And that's the case on carbon two. It's the case on carbon three. And on carbon four, it's to the right, so it's down. And you could fill in H's if you want here. Some people don't show the H's. That's probably good practice. That's how we do that. Um, about D sorbose. This is a hexose. This is carbon one, two, three, four, five. Six, but it's a ketose. It's a ketose. So it's a ketohexose. 
we want it in furanose form. So furanose forms, we draw the five-membered ring with the oxygen in the back, and that will be the anomeric. Now, where does the anomeric carbon come from? It comes from the carbonyl, so that's number two. So this is two, three, four, and five. And so, because it's a furanose form, we draw this and we identify the ring carbons and we see that carbon six is not part of the ring. So it's a D sugar. Where should carbon six be? It should be up. And it's a beta form. So where should the, oh wait, let me be careful. Uh, yes, where should the OH be on carbon 2? This becomes this becomes the OH on the anomeric carbon. So if it's beta, we put the OH here. Now, for L doses, the other bond on the anomeric carbon is a hydrogen. But what what do we have going down here? It's not a hydrogen, it's the start of the chain. So that's carbon number one right there. Then you do the same rules for carbon three. It is to the right, and so where does that go? Down, carbon four is to the left, so that goes up. Okay. Why is there no OH on carbon five again? because that OH, oxygen, is the ring oxygen now. That's why. Sometimes people forget that.